Welcome to part one of a two-part sew long tutorial for a fully lined baby boy romper. In the US, the style of romper is commonly referred to as a John John. We are going to be hacking the McCall's M6304 pattern to make this pattern fully lined. Now, I know this is a beginner-friendly project because this is the first garment I sewed when I was learning to sew. The materials you will need is two-thirds of a yard for your main fabric, two-thirds of a yard for your lining, two buttons, sew machine and thread, pins, and snaps of your choice. I will be using the size number 20 plastic cam snaps, but you can use sewing snaps, snap tape, or if you want to omit the snaps, you can just sew the crotch shut. I would love to know if you make one of these John Johns. Let me know in the comments below, or you can find me on Instagram and tag me with your photos. So let's get making. Hello everyone, thank you for joining me. Today we're gonna to do a sew long tutorial for making a fully lined John John. I love to give a John John for a baby gift. I have probably sewn more than 50 John Johns in my sewing time. And I still love to give this as a gift to new mothers. It's a gift that's always well received and who doesn't love to see the sweet little boys dressed up? Today, I'm gonna to be sewing a size two toddler, and I hope you'll join me in making this up. I am going to be using McCall 6304, and today's actually gonna be the first time I have sewn this pattern. For years, I have used Martha Pullen's pattern from her book, Applique. This book is no longer in print, so I didn't want to use this for the tutorial, but I love her method and I love how she lines the John John. So we're going to deviate from the pattern instructions a little bit and make a tiny alteration to the pattern. The Bacall's pattern does not call for lining the John John. You hem the bottom and there's a facing at the top. It does include instructions for snaps. I think this pattern is a good value because you get other options, so worth picking up. So let me adjust the camera angle so I can bring you down to show you the pattern and how you want to adjust the pattern to make this a line John John. For this John John, you're going to only need two of the pattern pieces. You're going to need piece two and piece three if you're making the size two toddler like I am making. I traced out the back for the piece three because this was a multi-size pattern piece and I wanted to preserve my pattern. This, the front, was a single piece so I went ahead and cut it out. I did keep the bottom half. You can see I cut it at the line for the short awl and if I want to make the long awl I will just tape it back together and use that piece. So the difference in the McCall's pattern and Martha Pullen's pattern which is the lined is this one hems the garment after you sew it together and is not lined. So we need to adjust the pattern pieces. When I look at the pattern instructions and the information on the pattern, it says that it's gonna have a one and a quarter inch hem. The McCall's pattern is sewn with a five eight inch seam allowance. So I know that if I want to just sew the bottom closed and closing my seams, that I need to get rid of part of this hem. And that's just some real simple math. And you don't need me to show you this math, it's that simple. But one and a quarter inch equals 10 eighths inches. You have a 5 eighth inch seam allowance. 
So I need to remove 5 8 inch from the seam. So what I did was I took my little dress making ruler, pattern ruler, and I measured 5 8 inch from the bottom and made a line. Hopefully you can see that here on both pattern pieces. And because I may want to use the pattern again, instead of cutting it off, I just fold it under. And if you get a little tab that sticks out, fold it under neatly like so. And this is my new pattern piece for making it lined. I am going to need to cut out two fronts of my main fabric, two fronts of my lining fabric, two back pieces in my main, and two back pieces in my lining fabric. For fabric choices, I have used a quilting cotton, linen, and seersucker in the many versions that I have sewn. And then for the lining, I either use a similar weight or something just a little bit lighter for the lining. I've used cotton batiste, cotton lawn, and sometimes I will use the coordinating fabric. If it's a quilting cotton and there's a coordinating fabric, it looks super cute when you use one for the outer and one for the lining. Today, we're gonna to make a very patriotic version. This is part of the vintage collection by Wyndham Fabric. It's called Storybook Americana. I thought this was appropriate since we're coming upon the 4th of July weekend and it would be really easy for you to be able to tell what is the right side and what is the wrong side of the fabric. So from a tutorial perspective, I thought this was a good choice. For the lining, I'm using a white, lightweight cotton lawn to line this jumper. So let's get started. I have already cut out my pieces. This is my front piece. The front piece has the shorter tab for the shoulder. And this is the back piece. Now they're very clearly marked, but the front piece is where you're gonna place the buttonhole and the back piece is where the button's gonna go. The first step in sewing this is you're gonna pin right sides together your front pieces. So I want you to do this for the main fabric and for the lining. We are going to sew this from the top of this, the center top all the way down through this curve to the bottom. We're going to sew at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And when we finish this, we're going to go ahead and sew the lining front the same manner and let's head over to the sewing machine. I'm at my sewing machine. I want to show a few things that I do to get ready for a sewing project. One thing I do is obviously I change my needle, start out with a new needle. I have a 7511 needle in there now. An 80 would work well, a universal needle. So I know I have a nice sharp new needle. I have checked that my thread is the color I want it to be. This thread you're not going to see, so I just have white thread in my bobbin and also um, on the spool. And I have marked out my seam allowance. My Viking Husqvarna does not have the marking for 5 8 inch. I have another stitch plate I could trade out for that does have it. But I wanted to show you an easy way to mark out where your seam allowance is. I have this acrylic seam guide. You can get seam guides just about anywhere for a couple of dollars, or you can make your own. This one I purchased, I think, for $5. It's pretty heavy duty. It has everything from 1 8 up to 3 quarter inch of common seams that you might use. So I found this very helpful. So what I did was I dropped my needle and I just do this with the hand crank down in 
And then I found my 5 8 inch seam allowance. I'm not sure how well this is coming up. And I'm going to slot this through to where the needle meets it. And then I put down some blue painter's tape along this edge. And that tells me that if I go up to this edge, I have a 5 8 inch seam allowance. So I've got that. I have my thread in. I'm going to sew with a straight stitch. You may want to do a couple of test stitches on some fabric similar to what you're using. And I'm just going to line this up and put this down. I'm going to sew down the front. This is my front piece. I'm going to go down the center front at 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to lock my stitches at the top and at the bottom. I don't want this to come unraveled. And hopefully I won't hit the tripod that's kind of in the way here. I'm going to bring the speed down a little bit and just sew. Let me go back a few stitches. I take my pins out as I go. That's a good practice. And I just sew along. I will say this feels a tiny bit awkward, not just because I'm leaning over the machine and not my usual sewing position, but this is a much bigger seam allowance than I'm accustomed to taking with a John John, but that's fine. The key is to have a very consistent seam allowance in your sewing. And I'm going to just continue around the curve. I might need to move the tripod a little bit. Try not to block. As I come through the curve, I'm gently guiding this. I am not shoving the fabric. I'm gently guiding it so that I can continue with the 5 8 inch seam allowance as I go around the curve my pin out, just gently guiding it, turning it as I sew. And the more you make this, the easier it becomes. So I've done the front piece. It should look like this. So I'm going to trim my threads and then I'm going to head over to the ironing board and I'm going to press my seam open. But before I do that, I am going to sew the front pieces of the lining together in the same way that I sewed this one. This is what your front should look like. All we have sewn so far is the front for our main fabric and our lining. I went over to the ironing board and I pressed my seam open all the way down. I pressed it from both sides. That's a good habit to get into. And now we are ready for the next step. I have my back pieces here and I'm going to be lining up right sides together. At this point, all our sewing is right sides together. I'm going to be aligning the side seam from my front piece to my back piece. So I want to line up this straight edge, right sides together, the back on the front. 
and then I'm going to pin it. And one side, I'm coming back to the other side. I've got this edge. I want to match up with this edge. Right sides together. And I'm going to pin it in place. I want to show you something that I do, even with as many as these have made, just as insurance so that I haven't turned my brain off. After I pin it, I take a peek and make sure that I have pinned it right sides together. It's very obvious in this fabric, but if I were using a fabric like say seersucker, where the front and the back looks the same, I might accidentally pin wrong side to right side and then have an awkward seam that I need to take out. I have done this in the past when I've been doing some really late night sewing. So just as a general rule, even when I'm using a fabric with an obvious right and wrong side, I just do a double check because I will take a seam out, but I'd rather not put one in that needs to come out. So we're going to pin these sides together and we're going to sew the side seams 5 8 seam allowance and then press them open and come back here. Again, we're going to do the same thing that we're doing for the main fabric for the lining fabric. This is what your project should be looking like right now. I've got it right side facing up. This is my main fabric. This is my lining fabric. You'll notice the construction is the same as for the main fabric. And I have added some interfacing onto the tabs. Let me turn it wrong side up so you can see. The camera's probably not going to pick it up with all of this white, but I added interfacing to the shoulder tabs. I used this So Keys E Knit Stay Tape interfacing. It is one inch, one and a quarter inches wide. I used this in part because I could find it. My sewing room is still in the process of being set up after the move and I just placed the interfacing where the buttonholes and the buttons would go on the shoulders and I did the same for where the snaps go on the crotch. Again, I'm not sure if the camera is going to pick that up. So every place where the snaps will go. So that's here in the center front in the crotch area and on this end here for the back. The next step, lay your main fabric right side facing up. Then you're going to take your lining and place it directly on top of the main fabric and line it up. I usually start with lining where I have the seams and pinning. We're going to pin the top and the front. We're going to leave the sides open at this point. So we're going to line this up. Let me make sure I'm getting this on camera. Okay. And this is the step that I had mentioned. I am totally team pin. I would much rather use pins here than clips because there's going to be a lot of curves sewing. And I feel like the pins hold better. You don't have that problem of your your foot running up into a clip and throwing things off. 
So I'm going to come to this side. I'm going to match up these seams. I'm going to pin. I'm going to pin all the way around the top. And then I'm come down and pin the bottom. Okay, so I have pinned right sides together, my main fabric and my lining. I have pinned all across the top. And I have pinned the entire bottom, including this little crotch piece here. Use as many pins as you feel comfortable or that you would like. The two areas we are not going to sew, this long side here and this opening, this long side and this opening. These openings, let me make sure it's in camera shot, these openings where we eventually will put in the snaps will be the last bit that we sew so i'm going to go over to the sewing machine i'm going to sew with a 5 8 inch seam allowance all along the top and the bottom i'm going to be very careful as i sew these curves to get a nice curve to maintain my 5 8 inch seam allowance this is not a race don't try to rush it but at the same time something i learned from a sewing friend and also experience is when you're going around a curve it's better to use a consistent speed of course stop to pull out your pins but use a consistent speed as you go around the curves and you're likely to get a nice neat rounded curve it's when you stop, start, stop, start all along the curve that you end up not getting curve quite as smooth. So let's head over to the machine. We're going to sew the top and the bottom and we're well on our way. I have the machine. I have the tripod set up so hopefully you will be able to see what I'm doing and I won't be blocking what I'm trying to work on for myself. I am going to start at the top. Notice I'm all pinned together here. I'm going to check my speed. I had increased it a little bit on my last pass because it was a little bit too slow for me. And I think I am good to go. Again, I'm going to lock my stitches in at the beginning and at the end by doing a reverse. Remove my pins as I go. I don't want to break a needle. It's a really good habit to get into. I'm going slow, but I'm continuously turning. I'm not sure if you can see that. The white fabric might make it a little hard to see, but I'm gently guiding it around the curve in a smooth single motion. A tip that I like to give is to really know your presser feet. There are markings on it that will help you know where you are in the garment. For example, on this particular foot when I come when I come to this point on my presser foot at the end I know that I'm a quarter inch away 
from the fabric. I do not typically sew a garment like this with a 5 8 seam allowance, so I'm going to make myself a little mark so I know where that is. I know when to turn and then I'm going to continue and all that does making that mark is it saves me from having to guess am I there yet am I there yet are we there yet mom and I can hit that mark with the needle down my machine has a needle down position where the needle goes into the fabric and the presser foot can lift up slightly and I can turn the fabric, pivot it like this. And notice my edge is right along the edge of the fabric. And so I can continue. Now, had I not made that mark, this is what I would end up doing. I would guess. Am I there yet? No. A couple more stitches. Am I there yet? There I am. And then knowing to turn. So I'm going to continue on my way around this garment. Keeping the quarter inch seam allowance. Again, I'm just sewing along the top and bottom. I'm going to finish this up, then I'll meet you over at the cutting table. I have sewn all along the top and the bottom. The next step is to trim my seam allowance. Right now I have a 5 8 inch seam allowance and I want to trim it to a quarter inch. I'm going to use my pinking shears because I need to clip my curves and you'll notice there are a lot of curves in this and I might as well just use the same tool for all of it. So I'm going to begin here and I'm going to trim it to about a quarter of an inch. I'm being very careful not to clip into my stitching. When I trim, since I'm right-handed, I like to have what I'm cutting away on the right side of the blades, and I want what I want to preserve on the left because I can more easily see what I don't want to cut, and that makes it a little easier to get the precise cut and to miss the stitching line. You do not want to cut into your sewing threads. So I'm going to continue all the way around and I'm going to clip my seam allowance. Be sure to catch part two of the Sew Long for the Fully Lined John John. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, I have other tutorials geared toward the beginning. So it's, I'll link them below and in the end cards. In particular, I have a sewing tutorial for the Taylor Romper by Children's Corner if you're interested in sewing children's clothes. I'll see you in part two.